what's like the first thing that comes to mind when you do it? When I think I'm healthy, definitely empowered. Like, I don't know, she's just so thoughtful. She's very quick on her feet and um, That's literally perfect. I just got it. Hello and welcome to True Crime Rocket Science, the most authentic voice in true crime. In this episode, we're going to deal with who was the other Gabby. We're going to get a different sense of Gabby from a video clip from her father's Twitter account. I'll put a link to that in the description. Also, did you know that Brian abandoned her five days after the Moab incident? He actually flew home to Florida and was in, in Florida for a couple of days before uh, returning to Salt Lake City. And that's when they, uh, you know, continued on with their trip to Grand Teton, right? Now, I have a sense that deep neurosis lies at the heart of the Petito case, apparently with both Gabby and Brian. What is neurosis? What is a neurotic person? Neurotic means you're afflicted by neurosis. Um, It means that your neurotic behavior is an automatic, unconscious effort to manage deep anxiety. What are we talking about when we say that? If you need to manage deep anxiety, then it means deep anxiety is there. Well, where's the deep anxiety coming from? Now, often in young people, deep anxiety may be rooted in dysfunctional families, broken families, mixed families. Um, But it could also just be to do with trying to find your way through life, uh, trying to deal with people who um, either accept you or don't accept you, Uh, groups that you belong to or don't belong to and you can imagine all of that within the context of the 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 pandemic there's got to be a lot of anxiety you know losing your job um, how do you study and all that a lot of this did predate the the pandemic and how that would have affected things like studying probably did predate some of the things in terms of the petito case but coming back to one definition neuroticism is a personality trait involving long-term tendency to be in a negative or anxious emotional state. And I think that's something we need to try and figure out is what was making Gabby anxious. And probably family members and friends might be able to answer that. And I don't think she was constantly anxious. I think there were moments, there were episodes, there were perhaps seasons where there was more anxiety than others. And something like a relationship especially something like an engagement, may feel like a blanket against that, against the barbs of the world kind of thing. Of course, when that relationship doesn't um, work out, then it can feel like your protection, your armor is uh, exposing you and you you are now naked against the elements, right? So I'm going to be dealing with neurosis as a separate subject, but first I want us to try to understand Gabby a little better. The Moab incident provides a glimpse of her, but all within the confines of a particular emotional episode. What happens when we broaden our view? And we can do that through Joseph Petito's clip on Twitter. So we're going to go back to that. um, But before we get to that, if you haven't subscribed to the channel, please do like, share, leave a comment. And let's get started. So I'm going to play that clip again from about the 30 second mark you're welcome to play it a couple of times what's very interesting is gabby's demeanor but also what she's saying how she's saying it and you sort of get a bit of an uneasy sense that while she's a fresh-faced young person she seems to be um something seems to be going on besides what behind the smiles if that makes sense let's listen in (laughs) <laughs> Wonderful. You didn't even know. Okay. Um, what is something that you are excited for for the summer? I love all the events that they do down here in the summer, um, like Live After Five. I'm excited for all the... Okay. It doesn't matter. You need to chop them up. So okay. that's perfect. Um, and now I'm going to move in front of you, and now you're going to look at the camera. Okay. And you're just going to say happy birthday, Noel. Okay. Just wait a second, I'm gonna like center it. Okay, ready, set, go. Happy birthday, Noel. So the first time I listened to this clip, I 
just sort of assumed that it was Gabby immediately prior to the trip and that she was thinking of of leaving her job and, and that's perhaps why she felt nervous or uncertain but actually it took place pre-pandemic at the No Lay Cafe in 2019 when Gabby was just 20 years old so it is important to bear in mind that she was a lot younger and you can actually see the change in her you can see that she's a lot more confident or she was a lot more confident in her social media two years later so she had developed she had evolved she had um, grown as a young person, right? But it does seem as though something that was there two years ago was still there two years later. And what, wasn't that some kind of anxiety? And it's possible that the pandemic, um, you know, if she grew in certain ways, if she developed in certain ways, the pandemic um, was crushing certain, certain aspects that were trying to emerge that it was um, making certain aspects in her anxiety that she had perhaps um, put behind her was perhaps bringing it back, making it difficult to manage. And when you can't manage your anxiety over a long period of time, it brings about neurosis. Now, broadly speaking, neurosis is a sort of a maladapted way of dealing with anxiety. And one example is, Someone who is neurotic may be negative about everything. And, and that is the way that they have dealt with a long season, a long, a long time, uh, you know, long term period of anxiety is, is they lower the expectations by just being negative about everything. Right. And that is just one sign of being neurotic. But the other thing, the other ways that people cope as well. Now, I think the thing that stands out when Gabby's asked to give a character reference, I think this is all meant to wish somebody happy birthday in terms of the video, but she's sort of asked in the middle of that to give a character reference on the spot for a co-worker, and the first word that comes to mind for her is empowered. Think of that word and how it applies to Gabby during the Moab incident in the context of uh, quitting her job in Florida, uh, and trying to become a content creator and what ultimately happened to her. Think about all of that is trying to empower yourself. Um, I think Gabby was trying to become empowered. She was trying to fully individuate, uh, which is to say she was trying to become her own person. And all of this happened when the events of the last few months played out. It was also a way of breaking out of the cage of the coronavirus, as I've said before. I think in some ways she appears a lot more confident and physically attractive in the Moab incident footage than she does here. Even so, the Moab incident seems to be about disempowering her. I mean, think about the ultimate impact of that. The officers ultimately blame her and Brian comes out of something that involved him apparently slapping and hitting her as per the 911 call. And I'll put a link to that in the description as well. I think if Gabby had, had said once that Brian had hit her, she would have empowered herself with the authorities. The, the whole um, nexus of what was going on, the whole pendulum, the, the momentum of, of what was taking place during that incident would have swung in a different direction. The other side of it is if she had been completely honest and completely, um, you know, like putting shade on to Brian she may have lost her travel companion. And ironically, you know, she actually did anyway. Very shortly after the Moab incident, Brian did do exactly that. He left Gabby at the Fairfield Inn in Salt Lake City and flew back home to Florida from August 17th to the 23rd. That, that's almost a week that he was away, ostensibly to help his father empty out a container. Now, it's possible when he was away... You know, um, you know, it's possible that he had to go away, but it's also possible that he wanted to go away. And if you think about him being an unwilling passenger on her journey, and then did, did she, you know, if you think about how long he was away, did it take that long to empty out the container? Or did it require some cajoling, some encouragement from her for him to go back to join her, Right. They left the hotel together and headed for Grand Teton, so he did rejoin her. 
And then that is where the trip, the relationship, and it appears Gabby's life all ended. Is there a link between all these sort of mini breakups? The Moab incident seriously undermined the engagement. And perhaps after that, a breakup was on the cards. Perhaps they did break up and this was followed by an attempt to make up, which lasted until there was a final emotional explosion between the two. At that age, especially when you're desperately in love and engaged, it can feel like the end of you and the end of your world. And it might have felt like the end of one person's world. What if it felt like the end of both of their worlds? The fact that Brian rejoined Gabby suggests that the events that unfolded after August 23rd were unexpected and triggered one or both of them in some way. It's also possible, you know, there could have been a lashing out, a kind of a um, someone losing their temper over something that was said and then and then that escalating, right? It's also possible that going back alone, even within the context of what amounted to a practice run, so... Brian may not have expected or anticipated that he was going to return home alone on the 1st of September, right? But him going back earlier amounted to a practice run. And the fact that he could return, that he was supposed to return, perhaps provided him with a mental movie of him doing it for real a second time. The other thing is, perhaps his father said to him something like, you could only spend another week there. Maybe he went back and he got some a little bit of, of pocket money from his, his father. Bear in mind, he's only 23 years old living at home. Perhaps his father said, if you come home and help me with this container, I'll give you a little something so that you guys can continue on your trip, right? When he And I wonder whether Brian told his, his family about the Moab incident when he was at home for the week, right? When he left her after the Moab incident, that was a precursor to leaving her again five days later and then finally abandoning her altogether. So all of these things go together. Now let's go back to Gabby at the No Lay Cafe two years earlier. I don't know about you, but I see a kind of a sadness in her face, especially in her eyes, as if Gabby has had one or two or several sleepless nights. I don't know if it's stress or lack of sleep or that she's sad or depressed or something like that. Um, she is smiling, you know, she is working, she is functional, but she seems to be, something seems to be bothering her. Um, and that lack of sleep, if that is the case, may also be the reason she seems to have a blank moment when she completely loses track of what she wants to say during the interview. The first time I heard the clip, I actually thought it predated her trip, and I thought she was, when she was asked about the summer, you know, was she afraid to reveal that she planned to quit? I thought that was possibly the reason for her uncertainty and hesitation that perhaps she wasn't happy in her job and that's why she sounded a little out of sorts. But obviously that wasn't the case. So what is the reason? The other thing to consider, and I don't mean this in an unkind way, but if you take a look at this clip from the Nole Cafe in 2019, Based on her shyness in this interview, and I'm sure she grew a lot as a person since then, her social media seems to confirm that. But based only on this video, does she look like she's got what it takes to be a content creator? You know, that requires resilience. It requires confidence, right? It requires charisma. And I do think she, she may well have empowered herself, um, you know, you know, doing what she did, buying the van, going on the trip, um, and all of that's fantastic. But it's one thing to make those decisions. It's another thing to actually execute, to appear on camera, to do the social media and do it well, to get traction amongst people, to, for, for, for your confidence to become contagious, your your enjoyment of the outdoors to catch on, Right. But I mean, there's another side to it. So I think it's fantastic that she did seem to empower herself. She did seem to have grown a lot in two years. And that's great. One wonders how much Brian had to do with that, how much it was just her growing as a person, um, maturing. But it's also possible someone like Brian, who'd known her for a while, known her at high school, known what she was like, for example, when this video was taken, known that she was quite shy, quite fragile, um, perhaps he couldn't let 
go of the Gabby he'd known earlier, that he wanted Gabby to sort of stay the small bird-like person and didn't really want her to spread her wings. What do you guys think? Thank you for listening and I'll see you guys next time.